In this lab, you will be learning about human body tissues. You will be learning to identify these tissues under the microscope, learning the components and cells in these tissues, as well as their functions and various locations in the human body. Let's start our discussion on human body tissues by first defining what a tissue is. A tissue is a group of cells similar in structure, or anatomy, and function, or physiology. They work together as a unit to perform a specific function. Before you even started this course, you were well aware that your body contains organs, such as the heart, or blood vessels, lungs, etc., and those organs are responsible for sustaining the life of the human organism. From the previous lab, you understand the basic anatomy and physiology of a cell, and you appreciate that the human body lives and dies at the cellular level, that cells are responsible for all of the life-sustaining functions necessary to maintain life. Now you're gonna learn about how those individual cells are organized into groups, which we call tissues, that support the overall functions of the organs that they compose. For example, if we look at a blood vessel as shown here, its function is to allow the movement or flow of blood from one location to another. A blood vessel is composed of epithelial tissue, smooth muscle tissue, and connective tissue, each tissue having its own function. Epithelial tissue lines a blood vessel, providing a low friction surface across which blood flows. Smooth muscle controls the size of a blood vessel by dilating or constricting. This controls the flow of blood through the blood vessel, and it also has an impact on blood pressure. And lastly, connective tissue found on the outer surface protects the deeper tissues and also binds and connects that blood vessel with surrounding tissues and organs. For those of you who might be interested, as I was, tissues gets its origins from the old French word tissu, which means a ribbon or belt of woven material. Don't hold me to this exact number, but there are about 14 specific tissues that you're gonna be learning about in this lab. However, those tissues all fall into four basic or main tissue types. And those are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. And if we were to look at any visceral organ, such as in this example, the small intestine, you would find all four basic types represented. You would find epithelial tissue lining the lumen. The lumen is the hollow portion of the small intestine where the quarter pound with cheese would be found. You'd find epithelial tissue lining the lumen and also on the outer surface covering the small intestine. You'll learn later that epithelial tissues cover and line. You would find connective tissue shown here in layers of white tissue here and here, binding one tissue to another. Here's connective, binding this tissue to another. Binding, protecting, connecting. You would find muscle tissue providing for movement. Muscle tissue is shown here in red. Here's a band of muscle tissue here and also here, providing for movement, and providing for control and coordination, there'd be nervous tissue. Nervous tissue is shown here in yellow. So in any 
major or visceral organ, you would have examples of all four basic tissue types. These are your learning objectives for this lab. You are expected to be able to identify specific human body tissues as seen under the microscope. You'll be responsible for being able to identify specific structures and cells of these tissues. And you'll also need to know the locations and functions of these tissues. I want to take a moment to talk about your approach to achieving these learning objectives. The default method of study for most students is always to memorize, memorize, memorize. I am hoping that you will take a different approach or at least be open to a different approach. Rather than just memorize, I want you to think about what you see and what you read in your lab manual or textbook. And in that process, learn the material instead of simply memorizing it. Now, you may ask the question, what in the world is the difference between memorizing and learning? I thought they were sort of the same thing. Let me contrast the two. When you memorize, you're just teaching yourself to recall little bits of information. You may or may not understand that information. For example, when you were a small child and you were introduced to family members, maybe you attended a family get together for the first time or a family reunion, and you were told that person's your aunt, that person's your cousin, that person's your grandma, etc. Did you really know what those designations meant? No, you just knew that person's my aunt, that person's my cousin, that person's my grandmother. You just memorized that, right? You didn't understand that your cousin was your aunt's son or daughter. But you knew that, yep, that's my aunt, yep, that's my cousin. As you got older, you probably began to ask questions and figure things out and understand that your grandmother was or is your mother's mother or that your cousin is your aunt's son or daughter. You began to understand the relationships. You began to learn the different members of a family unit. When you learn, you understand the relationships and you're able to connect different bits of information and understand how they interact. That's the difference between memorizing and learning. And learning is the approach I'd like for you to take in this lab. So when you look under the microscope and you see the structure of a particular tissue, or if you look at an image of how it looks under the microscope, and you look at its structure, then when you read in your lab manual or textbook what its function is, try to relate what you observed of its structure or anatomy to what the textbook said its function is. And then when you read what it's, where it's located, relate that location to its function. And of course, you should be able to therefore link its location back to its structure. So you're studying these bits of information that you have to know holistically, and you're making sense of it all. And you are learning rather than simply memorizing. Let me give you an example. So the outer layer of skin is called your epidermis and that epidermis is composed of epithelial tissue. Specifically, it's composed of what's called stratified squamous 
epithelial tissue. Well, what do you think the function of your outer layer of skin is? Obviously, it's protection. It functions to protect the lower layers of skin, of, of tissue. So, let's relate its function or its, to its structure. This is what your skin looks like under the microscope. This is the outside world here. This is the surface of your skin. We're gonna focus on the epidermis here. So this is the outer layer of your skin. It's composed of a specific epithelial tissue called stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Basically, you have multiple layers of flat cells. How does that serve to protect the deeper layers of tissue. You're gonna have friction here at the surface and that's gonna slough off the outer layer of cells. Coming behind it, you have lots and lots of layers of flat cells which are going to replace the cells that are constantly being sloughed off here. So really looking at the structure of the stratified squamous epithelial tissue, you can relate it to its function, which is protection, which you can definitely relate to its location, which is the outer layer of skin. So this is the approach that I suggest you take in learning the material for this lab. Certainly, you could look at this tissue under the microscope and memorize this is what stratified squamous epithelium looks like. You could memorize what you read in your book that stratified squamous epithelial tissue serves to protect and that it's found in the skin. And you could memorize those separate bits of information. However, I think a better approach is if you study that information holistically and you learn it instead. Your brain likes to learn. It likes to understand and make sense of the interconnectivity of the information that you present it with. So feed your brain the information in a way that it finds palatable. It's much easier to learn material than it is to memorize it. So that's the approach that I suggest that you take. So as you complete this lab, when you are observing the structure of a specific tissue as seen under a microscope, and you read about its function in the lab manual or textbook, relate that function to its structure. Relate its location to its function. And therefore complete the circle by relating its location to its structure. Think and learn the material rather than simply trying to memorize lots of bit of separate information.